Good evening, I'm Dick Cunningham. Normally, I sit behind this desk for Spotlight East Windsor with Mayor Janice Miranoff. Tonight, however, the mayor has graciously offered to shine the spotlight on Bob Sittner, a courageous member of the East Windsor Fire Department who has served the township with distinction for 25 years. In a quarter of a century, Bob has responded to hundreds, perhaps thousands of calls and in various roles has put his life in jeopardy for the township in what is described as the most dangerous occupation. And for that, we salute him and say thank you for 25 years. And for this though, he doesn't get paid. Of course, if one were to meander down to Hidden Springs Lane, you'd have to sort of wonder, where does he get the financial wherewithal for such a lavish lifestyle? And to tool around in some of the finest automobiles ever made. He travels between here and Florida in a private corporate jet, walks around with a platinum American Express card in his wallet, and vacations with the beautiful people all over the world. Using that analytical mind, Dr. Sittner, through the years, has gone after the jugular with no mercy. His mild-mannered appearance is indeed misleading, to say the least. Note that some of the early video is a bit dark, technology being what it was. I don't know what to say, Tracy. I, don't, I can't figure you out. It's like you're a clone for Jay Clampin. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say that you're not the brightest guy in the world, but clearly you're the Forrest Gump of Fire Company number two. <laughs> now that's cool to me, but I, I do want to congratulate you and you know say that since you became captain, the state notified us we're, we're receiving special ed funding. So. <laughs> where's, where's Larry? Thanks, <laughs> now Larry Blake. Come, on, come up, sir. I know, I know, I know. you have a date this year. Does she know the kind of dry spell you went through? <laughs> you know what I want to do? No, it's been a very stressful year for you. So I want to do something. You know, I'm a psychologist. So I'm trained to help people such as yourself. I want to do. I want you to use your imagination. Okay, just bear with me one sec. That's make believe. What is this? Can anybody see this? Okay. It's, it's, what is it? You want to tell? Them? I have no idea. Good, good, good. It's a castle, but we're going to make believe that it's a house. Do you know where this house is located? <laughs> yeah, right, right in downtown Heights Town. Right there. There it is. Big, big baby. Probably the biggest one in Heights Town. Can you see this? Guess what? It's on fire. <laughs> A few years ago, Bill Askinstead retired his white hat after 19 years, and Bob Sittner rose to the occasion to thank the chief for his nearly two-decade contribution. In those years, I got to know Bill, not only as a chief, but as a husband, as a, as a uh, father, and more importantly, as a friend. And it was during those years that I, I really realized how much I hate Bill Askinstead. I mean, let's be honest. This man has really no redeeming value to speak of. Um, I, I look at Bill. He's been chief for 21 years, and we're going to honor him tonight. Well, the reality is I've been in this fire company for 20 years. You don't see anybody honoring me. Well, Bob, despite the fact that um, you did a pretty good number on me at the uh, retirement dinner, and uh, managed to berate me rather well. Uh, I'm going to have the courtesy of sparing you all that. You remember a fire where you and I were working on the roof on Bolton Road uh, on a rather cold winter night and the roof got a little icy and you did this wonderful slide by me from the top of the roof yelling out for help and me being dumb enough to help you ended up falling off the roof with you. Well, 
The interesting thing that most people don't realize about that is despite the fact that you broke your nose and suffered a lot of cuts and bruises falling through trees and bushes, um, when I got to the other side of the yard where we fell into two different yards, I could hear you calling out and calling out saying, Bill, where are you? Bill, where are you? And with the help of some firefighters that had come to our aid and some EMTs, when we walked around the fence, lo and behold, what did we find but Bob Sittner on all fours, very similar to a dog, dinged for a bone. And we said, Bob, what the hell are you doing? I'm looking for Askinstead. Bob, I really, really feel that I have to love a person who, despite all the injuries and all the humiliation, was sitting there digging with bare hands in mud, trying to find his fallen brother. Another incident you might very well not remember, or not want anybody else to remember, is an incident where we had a little fire on Bennington Drive. And you being the gung-ho guy that you are, wanted to be on the first line to go in with me to try and search for the victims. Do you remember me getting to the top of the stairs, looking for the victims while you were coming up behind me with the hose? And do you remember me calling you several times saying, Bob, when the hell are you going to bring the hose up here? It's rather hot. And your reply being, as soon as I clear the vomit from my mask so that I can breathe. And do you remember later coming up the stairs without your mask? <laughs> you who can't stand to be in a bar where people smoke, just coming up to save me. A brother like that I simply just can't harass. I remember many years later after this when we were firefighters together, being a chief, and at the time my son had just joined the fire company. And we had a rather horrendous fire going on over in the Avon condominiums. And my son, being very much like you, wanted to be the first guy off the truck to get on the hand line and go fight the fire. And I remember during that fire that I saw something that scares firefighters all the time what appeared to be a flashover on the second floor. And immediately our first thoughts were for accountability. And as I looked around the fire ground, we were able to account for everybody but two people. One of those was my son. And just shortly after that, I remember one of the line officers running up to me and saying, Billy and Bob were on the second floor where this flashover had just occurred. And for once, I really, really worried, more so than ever being a firefighter in my life. I worried for my son. When all was said and done, the two of you came down the stairs, rather scared, a little beat up, and everybody was all right. And I remember saying to you, thank God Billy was with you. But truly, Bob, knowing that you were the guy upstairs with my own kid, meant an awful lot to me that night, even for a few seconds. Uh, I always appreciate the friendship, camaraderie and a love for a brother firefighter. You know, there's few opportunities in life where you really get to tell somebody what you feel about them. I would sooner stand in line for a root canal than say anything nice about Bob Sittner. Dr. Bob Sittner. Uh, he's a pain in the ass. Does this sound familiar? Captain, I'm on the way. I'm coming around the lake at Etra. Wait for me. First of all, I'm a lieutenant. And second of all, I was firefighter of the year. I don't think I want to be involved with this. What can you say about Bob sitting there that hasn't already been said before? But actually, quite honestly, I'm sick and tired of talking about Bob sitting there. Bob, 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 Bob. It's always about Bob. Um, I'm glad that night I didn't run you over so you could enjoy this party. I welcome the chance to congratulate Bob, but I don't think I will. Hmm. Bob sitting there. Congratulations. Nah.
What? I'm busy. Can you leave me alone? It's only for sitting her. It's not like it's important or anything. It's so nice to be here for Bob sitting his dinner. We're roasting him. What a guy. He sounds just a little bit before I am. That crazy guy that I thought, because the man is 55 years old. I don't know. What is he doing if I can't be? He should be running to fries like that. You. Hey, Bob. Happy 25th. Say congratulations to Bob Sittner. <laughs> yeah, right. Bobby, save the trees first. 25 years is a long time. Quarter of a century to be precise. So Bob, you're to be commended for your service to this fire company and you're to be commended for your service to the community. If you ever ask him to drive a truck, he hates it. Dude. I don't understand what he's doing here. He's crazy. You know what I mean? Bob who? And second of all, firemen can talk about the stars if they want to, Bob. And you don't have to fill me up to put me on your truck either. He loves to be called Doc, man. Doc this, Doc that. All this money he's making, he just doesn't know what to do with He's got a house there. You know, we all have lots of memories, whether they're drills or fires. Um, Bob obviously doing the swan dive off, off the roof with Askenstadt. We'll all remember that. Bob giving mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to a cat. But we won't get into that one because there might be kids watching. And third of all, I didn't bitch slap you in that fire. Mm, not very hard anyway. Hey Bob, I understand from the guy behind the camera that you have 25 years of fire service. Big deal. Hey Bob, I really have nothing to say, so uh, good luck anyways. Behind every great man is a great woman, so congratulations to Beth as well. Because certainly without Beth uh, along there with you, you probably would not have been the successful person you are today. Um, very well respected around here, I will definitely say that. So. You're 25 years old? Three. You're 23 years yeah. old, which means you weren't even born yet when Bob Sittner joined this fire department. Probably not. <laughs> Have you learned anything from him? Yeah, I learned uh, a lot. I, uh... <laughs> He's crazy. I don't know what's the matter with the guy. He's a flower for two weeks. He comes here for two weeks. Goes to the list, goes to the flower, goes to the back here. I can remember the first day I met Bob Sittner. I walked into the firehouse and there was this young blonde-headed guy with a little toddler in hand walking around the firehouse. We were a young fire company at that time and we were desperate for new members, so we took him anyway. That was a long time ago. That little toddler has since gotten her master's degree a couple of months ago. And over the years, Bob has given his dedication, his enthusiasm, and most important, a sense of humor to the fire company. In addition to that, he's helped members both inside the fire company and outside the fire company. I think the fire company has been lucky to have him as a member, and I've been lucky to have him as a friend. Hi, you you want me to say something good about Bob Sittner? Bob who? We were sitting in a diner with Larry Blake and you and your wife, and the tones came out for some kind of call and you had your motorcycle and you came flying down the street and, and evidently you must have dumped the bike on the way to a piss call that just about sums it up the other call was the one on Daniel Street where you ran into that bull and I don't know how you knew it was a bull because you must have been looking at the wrong end of him it was a steer so the part that you were looking at was gone anyway congratulations to a real good inside firefighter if I had to choose for the top five for inside guys, you'd be on that list, Bob. Hey, Bob, I'm not trying to uh, push you out of your position, but uh, I heard the weather in Florida is very nice. Hello, Bob. It's me, Barry. We miss you guys down here. But, Bob, over the weekend, we had another FLAMISH! To add to the tributation, this envelope came in the mail just this morning. We'll let Bob open it and read it aloud. Again, congratulations.